your prosperity is in God. Written and published by God Daily News. As a tree planted by the waters, your prosperity can be deeply rooted in God's promises. But how does one tap into this divine wellspring? What steps should you take? The Bible offers a blueprint, a step by step guide, to aligning yourself with God's plan for your prosperity. Let's explore together how faith, giving, and living in financial freedom can open the doors to God's favor. But before we embark on this journey, it's important to remember, it's not just about monetary wealth. So, what else is there? Chapter 1 Knowing God's Promises Diving right into God's promises, you'll discover an ocean of assurances that can anchor your faith and fuel your journey towards prosperity. You see, God's Word isn't just a collection of ancient texts, but a living testament to His steadfast promises. These promises are like precious gems embedded in the scriptures, just waiting for you to unearth and claim them as your own. To know these promises, you must immerse yourself in His Word. You might start by reading the Bible daily, reflecting on the messages, and applying them in your life. You'll find promises of peace, guidance, protection, strength, and yes, prosperity. Remember, prosperity in God's viewpoint isn't just about material wealth. It's also about spiritual richness, peace of mind, and a life overflowing with love, joy, and purpose. Understanding God's promises, however, isn't a one-time event. It's a lifelong journey. Why? Because the deeper you delve into God's Word, the more you'll grasp the breadth and depth of His promises. You'll start to see patterns, themes, and connections that you may not have noticed before. But here's a word of caution, don't just know God's promises. Believe in them. Trust them. Live them. That's the key to unlocking their power in your life. After all, a promise is only as good as the faith you put in it. So, as you embark on this journey of knowing God's promises, make sure to bring along your faith, hope, and love. With these, you're off to a great start. Chapter 2. Faith as a Foundation Building your life on faith is like laying a solid foundation for a house, it provides stability, strength, and support. Just as a home needs a strong base to withstand storms and natural disasters, your life requires faith to endure trials and tribulations. Faith isn't just an abstract concept, it's a vital part of your life's framework, the bedrock upon which you can build a fulfilling and prosperous life. Just as Hebrews 11 verse 1 says, Now faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we don't see. This verse nicely expresses the essence of religion. It's about having the assurance that, no matter what happens, God's promises for your life will come to pass. It's about believing in God's goodness, even when circumstances seem contrary. Faith is a journey, not a destination. It's about growing and maturing in your relationship with God, learning to trust Him more with each passing day. It's about stepping out of your comfort zone, taking risks for God's glory, and trusting Him with the outcome. Remember, faith isn't blind optimism or wishful thinking. It's grounded in the reality of who God is and what He's promised to do. So, make faith your firm foundation, and you'll find that you can weather any storm that comes your way. When your faith is strong, you'll be able to stand firm, knowing that your prosperity is anchored in God, the source of all blessings. In the next section, we'll delve into biblical wealth principles and explore how they can help you achieve prosperity. Chapter 3 Biblical Wealth Principles Having established faith as your bedrock, let's now explore the principles of wealth as presented in the Bible, which can guide you towards prosperity. To start, it's important to understand that the Bible doesn't condemn wealth, but it does caution about the love of money, 1 Timothy 6 verse 10. Wealth can indeed be a blessing if used wisely and for God's glory. The Bible also teaches the principle of sowing and reaping, a simple yet profound concept. Galatians 6 verse 7 reminds us, Do not be deceived, God can't be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. 
This principle applies to our finances as well. If you're judicious about your financial decisions, you'll reap the benefits in due course. Another principle is that of stewardship. Being a good steward of your resources is a fundamental biblical teaching. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30 illustrates this. It's not about how much you have, but how well you manage what you've been given. Lastly, let's remember the principle of generosity. Proverbs 11 verse 24 says, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer, another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. Generosity isn't just a noble virtue, it's a biblical mandate, and it leads to prosperity. Chapter 4 Prosperity in God's Kingdom In the realm of God's kingdom, prosperity takes on a whole new meaning that transcends material wealth. It's about spiritual richness, inner peace, and eternal life. It's about abundance that isn't measured by earthly standards but by divine ones. When you shift your focus from acquiring earthly treasures to seeking God's kingdom, you'll find a different kind of prosperity. You'll experience joy that's not dependent on circumstances, peace that surpasses understanding, and love that's unconditional. These are treasures that money can't buy and thieves can't steal. Matthew 6 verse 33 tells us, But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. This verse isn't saying that material wealth is unimportant or bad. Instead, it's teaching us about priorities. When you put God first, all other things fall into place. In God's kingdom, prosperity also means being in good health, just as your soul is getting along well, 3 John 1 verse 2. It's about being content in whatever situation you're in, knowing that God provides what you need, Philippians 4 verses 12 to 13. Chapter 5. The Power of Giving. Unquestionably, the act of giving holds significant power in achieving spiritual prosperity. You might wonder how this works. It's simple, when you give generously and joyfully, you're acting in alignment with God's principles. In Proverbs 11 verse 24, it's written, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer, another withholds what he should give, and only suffers want. The Bible clearly affirms that there's power in giving. But remember, it's not just about giving material possessions or money. You can give your time, talents, and even your love. By doing so, you're not only helping others, but you're also aligning yourself with God's will. In Luke 6 verse 38, Jesus says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be measured back to you. However, it's essential to understand that the act of giving shouldn't be done out of obligation or for gaining favor. It should come from a place of love and a desire to help. God loves a cheerful giver, as indicated in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7, each one must give as he's decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Chapter 6. Honoring God with your finances. While the power of giving is transformative, it's equally important to honor God through responsible stewardship of your finances. How you manage your money speaks volumes about your character, faithfulness, and commitment to God. It's not about the size of your bank account, but it's the attitude towards money and how you use it that truly matters. You may ask, how do I honor God with my finances? The answer lies within the Bible's teachings. Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10 suggests, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the firstfruits of all your produce. This doesn't necessarily mean you should give all your money away. Rather, it's about prioritizing God in your financial decisions. Consider your spending habits. Are they in line with God's desires for you? The Bible encourages a lifestyle of simplicity and contentment. Overspending or living beyond your means could lead to financial stress, which can distract from your spiritual focus. Moreover, avoid dishonest gains. Proverbs 13 verse 11 states, Wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. 
So, engage in honest work and make wise investments. Lastly, remember to be generous. Giving back a portion of what God has blessed you with reflects a heart of gratitude and obedience. Chapter 7 Seeds of Abundance Planting the seeds of abundance in your life involves more than just financial prosperity, it's about cultivating an attitude of gratitude, generosity, and faith. This isn't about immediate gratification or quick fixes. It's a process that requires patience, diligence, and an unwavering trust in God's promises. In the Bible, Galatians 6 verse 7 states, Whatever a man sows, that he'll also reap. This principle applies not only to your financial life but to every aspect of your existence. When you sow seeds of thankfulness, you'll reap a harvest of joy. When you sow seeds of kindness, you'll harvest a life filled with love and compassion. Moreover, generosity is a crucial part of this equation. The Bible highlights the importance of giving in 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6, Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Your willingness to give reveals the state of your heart and your trust in God's promise of abundance. Lastly, faith is the fertile soil in which these seeds grow. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, And without faith, it's impossible to please Him, for he who comes to God must believe that He's and that He's a rewarder of those who seek Him. Keep nurturing your faith, believing in God's goodness, and you'll see your life flourish in unexpected ways. Chapter 8 Trusting God's Provision Building on the idea of sowing seeds of abundance, it's essential to trust in God's provision, even in times of scarcity or uncertainty. You might wonder how to trust when your current circumstances seem bleak. But, remember, the Bible is full of stories of God's faithfulness in providing for His people. Consider the story of the Israelites in Exodus 16. When they were wandering in the desert, God provided manna from heaven every day to feed them. This is a powerful reminder that God's provision doesn't operate on human logic or economic systems. He can provide in ways you can't even imagine. So, how do you cultivate this trust? Start by acknowledging that everything you have is from God. As it says in Psalm 24 verse 1, the earth is the Lord's, and everything in it. This isn't just about your financial resources, but also your time, talents, and opportunities. Recognize God's hand in everything you have achieved. Next, commit your needs to God in prayer. Philippians 4 verse 6 advises, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. This means giving your worries to God, and thanking Him for His provision, even before you see it. Lastly, remain patient. God's timing isn't always our timing. He knows what's best for us and when it's best for us to receive it. Trusting in God's provision means waiting on His timing, knowing that He'll provide in abundance when the time is right. Through this trust, you'll find peace, contentment, and true prosperity. Chapter 9 Seeking First His Kingdom In your journey toward prosperity, it's crucial to prioritize seeking God's kingdom above all else. This doesn't mean neglecting your material needs or desires. It simply means putting God's will and His kingdom at the center of your life. This act of faith, in turn, has immense implications for your prosperity. Matthew 6 verse 33 states, But seek first His kingdom and His righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. In essence, it's about aligning your desires with God's will, and trusting that He'll provide for your needs. When you seek God's kingdom first, you're committing to living according to His standards and principles. You're not just chasing after wealth for its own sake, but seeking to use it as a tool for God's glory. This is a transformative perspective. It doesn't diminish your efforts or ambitions. Instead, it refines them, ensuring they're directed toward noble, God-honoring ends. You begin to see every opportunity, not just as a chance for personal gain, but as a chance to advance God's kingdom. Seeking God's kingdom first doesn't guarantee a life free from difficulties. It does, however, 
promise a life filled with purpose, peace, and ultimate prosperity. The kind of prosperity that isn't measured just by material wealth, but by the richness of your relationship with God, the impact you have on others, and the eternal rewards waiting for you in heaven. So seek first His kingdom, and witness how God can bring prosperity into your life in ways you've never imagined. Chapter 10 God's Covenant of Prosperity When it comes to understanding God's covenant of prosperity, it's essential to grasp that His promises aren't just spiritual, but also practical and applicable to your daily life. This covenant isn't about an elusive, abstract concept of prosperity. It's about a promise that God has made to you, which includes physical and material blessings. The Bible is filled with references to this covenant. For instance, Deuteronomy 8 verse 18 states, But remember the Lord your God, for it's He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. This verse indicates that God isn't just the source of spiritual riches, but also the provider of your ability to generate material wealth. God's covenant of prosperity isn't a magic formula that will instantly transform your financial status. It's a commitment from God to provide for your needs and bless you as you obediently follow His guidance. This doesn't mean you won't face challenges or difficulties. However, as you navigate these, you can have confidence in God's promise to support and prosper you. Despite popular misconceptions, this covenant isn't about greed or avarice. It's about understanding God as your provider and acknowledging His role in your prosperity. You're not expected to hoard wealth for selfish gain. Instead, you're encouraged to use the prosperity God grants you in ways that honor Him and benefit others. God's covenant of prosperity is a practical, real promise from a God who cares about your daily needs and your future. Understanding this covenant is key in realizing that your prosperity is indeed rooted in God. Chapter 11 Stewardship and Blessings With God's blessings comes the responsibility of stewardship, a crucial aspect of your journey towards prosperity. Stewardship, in its essence, is the management of everything God entrusts to you. It's not solely about money, it includes your time, talents, relationships, and even the earth's resources. Understanding and embracing stewardship places you within a biblical framework that allows for blessings to flow abundantly. Recall the parable of the talents in Matthew 25 verses 14 to 30. The servants who used their gifts appropriately were rewarded, while the ones who concealed their talents were chastised. This illustrates God's expectation of us, He blesses us, and in return, we're to use these blessings responsibly and productively. In 1 Peter 4 verse 10, you're reminded, as each has received a gift, use it to serve one another, as good stewards of God's varied grace. This verse emphasizes that your gifts aren't just for your benefit but also for the service of others. You're a vessel through which God's blessings flow, and you'll find that as you give, you'll also receive. Chapter 12 Financial Wisdom from Proverbs Building on the concept of stewardship, Let's now explore the treasure trove of financial wisdom found in the book of Proverbs. This ancient collection of sayings, attributed to King Solomon, offers timeless insights about wealth, poverty, and God's perspective on managing resources effectively. The book of Proverbs encourages a balanced approach to wealth. Dishonest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money little by little makes it grow. Proverbs 13 verse 11. This verse warns you against quick, dishonest means to wealth, advocating instead for diligent, honest work. The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender, Proverbs 22 verse 7. Proverbs advises against excessive borrowing, as it leads to a form of enslavement. Debt-free living is encouraged for maintaining financial peace. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the firstfruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10. This verse emphasizes honoring God with your wealth, implying that your prosperity is ultimately a gift from Him. Proverbs also teaches that generosity towards the poor is a way to honor God. Whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord, and He'll reward them for what they've done. Proverbs 19 verse 17. 
This shows that prosperity isn't just about accumulating wealth, but also about compassionately sharing it with those in need. Chapter 13 Faithful Tithing Practices Delving into the practice of faithful tithing, it's important to grasp its profound significance in the biblical context, where it's often associated with demonstrating trust in God's provision. Tithing, or giving a tenth of one's wages to the church or charity, is more than just a religious obligation, it is a strong demonstration of faith. It's a tangible way you can acknowledge God as the source of all your blessings. Now, let's break down the practice. Firstly, your tithe should be the first part of your income. Proverbs 3 verse 9 instructs, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. This means you're advised to set aside your tithe before allocating money for other expenses. It's a way of prioritizing God's kingdom above your personal needs and wants. Secondly, tithing should be done with a cheerful heart. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 7 states, Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. This underscores that your attitude in giving is just as important as the act itself. Lastly, remember that tithing is a reflection of your faith in God's provision. By giving a portion of your income, you're essentially saying, God, I trust that you'll provide for my needs. It's a bold declaration of dependence on Him. Chapter 14 Multiplication Through Faith after practicing faithful tithing, you can also experience God's blessings through the concept of multiplication, a key principle rooted deeply in faith. This biblical principle isn't merely about increasing your possessions, but it's a divine promise that your faith will multiply your blessings, and in turn, glorify God. Just as seeds planted in good soil yield plentiful crops, your faith, when rooted in God, will bring forth abundance. You're not merely a passive receiver, you're an active participant. You're called to act in faith, trusting that God will multiply your efforts and deliver His promises. Consider the story of the five loaves and two fish in the Bible, Matthew 14 verses 13 to 21. Jesus took a small offering and multiplied it to feed thousands. This wasn't an act of magic but an act of faith. The disciples offered what they had, and Jesus multiplied it. The same applies to you. When you offer your faith, your time, your talents, and your resources to God, He can multiply them beyond your expectations. Chapter 15 Abundant Harvests in God Reaping an abundant harvest in God, you'll discover, isn't just about receiving material wealth, but also about cultivating spiritual wealth and growth. This richness doesn't come from worldly possessions, but from a deep connection with God. It's about allowing His Word to seep into your heart, influencing your actions and decisions. In the Bible, God promises abundant harvests for those who obey His commandments and walk in His ways. In 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10, NIV, it says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. This verse clearly shows that God is the provider of our needs and the multiplier of our seed for sowing. Don't mistake this for a gift to get scheme. You're not trading obedience for blessings. Instead, think of it as aligning yourself with God's principles. By doing so, you position yourself in a place where blessings are freely flowing. God isn't a vending machine, dispensing rewards for good behavior. He's a loving Father who desires to bless His children. Chapter 16 Claiming God's Promises While you're positioning yourself for blessings by aligning with God's principles, it's also essential to understand how to claim His promises confidently and faithfully. These promises aren't just wishful thinking, they're divine assurances that He's provided for us in His Word. To claim God's promises, you must first know what they are. Spend time in His Word, absorbing the scriptures that speak of His goodness and provision. When you find a promise that resonates with your situation, take hold of it. Believe in it with all your heart. God's Word is infallible, if He said it, He'll do it. Next. Pray these promises over your life. 
There's power in speaking God's word back to him. It's not a demand, rather it's demonstrating your faith in his word. When you pray, do so with conviction and expectancy, knowing that God is faithful to fulfill his promises. Chapter 17 Divine Guidance on Finances In navigating your financial journey, divine guidance plays an indispensable role, showing you not just how to accumulate wealth, but also how to handle it wisely and use it for God's glory. The Bible, your guidebook, is replete with verses that offer wisdom on managing finances. First, understand that everything you have is God's provision. Psalm 24 verse 1 says, The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, reminding you that God is the source of all wealth. Therefore, it's important to acknowledge Him as the provider of your financial resources. Next, God instructs us to avoid debt whenever possible. Proverbs 22 verse 7 warns, The rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. This doesn't mean you can't take loans or use credit, but you should strive to live within your means and avoid unnecessary debt. Also, God encourages saving and investing wisely. Proverbs 21 verse 20 advises, In the house of the wise are stores of choice food and oil, but a foolish man devours all he has. This guides you to save for the future and not spend everything you earn. Lastly, generosity is a key principle in God's financial guidance. Proverbs 11 verse 25 assures, A generous man will prosper, he who refreshes others will himself be refreshed. This instructs you to give willingly, for it's in giving that you receive. Chapter 18 Overcoming Financial Fears Overcoming financial anxieties is an important step in achieving financial freedom and serenity, and the Bible provides helpful lessons to help you along the way. You might be grappling with worries about debt, job security, or unexpected expenses. You're not alone in these fears, and there's a way through. The Bible encourages you to cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you, 1 Peter 5 verse 7. This verse suggests that you don't have to bear the weight of financial fears alone. God is interested in every aspect of your life, including your finances. Look to Philippians 4 verse 6 as well, where it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Your urge to bring your financial concerns to God instead of letting anxiety consume you. Moreover, the Bible reminds you to trust in God as your provider. In Matthew 6 verse 26, Jesus points out that God feeds the birds, and you're much more valuable to Him than they are. This doesn't mean you should neglect practical financial management. Instead, you're encouraged to do your part, then trust God for the outcome. Lastly, remember Proverbs 22 verse 7, which warns that the borrower is slave to the lender. It's wisdom to avoid unnecessary debt whenever possible, which often begins by addressing and overcoming your financial fears. Chapter 19 Prayer for Financial Breakthrough Turning to prayer during financial challenges can be a powerful path towards breakthroughs, guiding you towards the wisdom and peace needed to make sound decisions. If you're feeling overwhelmed by financial stress, don't despair. Prayer can serve as your anchor, providing you with the strength to navigate through the tumultuous seas of financial uncertainty. However, it's important to remember that prayer isn't just about asking for blessings or financial miracles. It's also about seeking wisdom, understanding, and guidance. When you pray, don't just ask for money, ask for the wisdom to handle the money you have and the discernment to make wise financial decisions. The Bible refers to many examples of people who sought God's help in times of need, and they weren't disappointed. Take the example of King Solomon. He didn't pray for riches, but for wisdom to govern his people wisely. God was pleased with this, and not only gave him wisdom but also wealth. When praying for a financial breakthrough, be specific about your needs but also show gratitude for what you already have. This will cultivate a mindset of abundance, making you more receptive to the blessings and opportunities that come your way. Chapter 20 God's Blessings on Obedience 
Embracing obedience to God's commands can open the doors of heaven, showering you with blessings beyond measure. This obedience isn't a mere submission to authority, rather, it's a heartfelt commitment to honor God's word, trusting in his wisdom and goodness. This path may not always be easy, but it's certainly rewarding. You'll find many Bible verses that highlight the importance of obedience. Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 2, for instance, says, And if you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. The blessings God promises aren't just material, they encompass every aspect of your life. Peace, joy, wisdom, and spiritual growth are some of the intangible rewards you'll reap. These blessings are a manifestation of God's love for you, a testament to His faithfulness when you walk in obedience. However, it's crucial to understand that obedience doesn't guarantee a trouble-free life. Challenges may still come, but with obedience, you'll have the assurance that God is with you, providing strength and guidance. Chapter 21 Miracles of Provision While obedience to God's word equips you with strength and guidance amid challenges, it also often paves the way for miracles of provision in your life. This provision, a divine intervention, is God's way of fulfilling your needs in times of scarcity or hardship. Let's dive into the Bible to illustrate this profound truth. The story of Elijah and the widow of Zarephath, found in 1 Kings 17 verses 7-16, is a prime example. Elijah, in a time of famine, was led by God to a widow who could barely feed herself and her son. But when God commanded her to feed Elijah first, she obeyed. Miraculously, her jar of flour and jug of oil never ran out, providing sustenance throughout the famine. This miracle wasn't a random act, but a direct response to the widow's obedience and faith in God's word. You see, when you trust in God's promises and follow His commands, you're opening doors for His divine provision. You're setting the stage for miracles that defy human understanding. Remember, God's provision isn't limited to material needs. He also provides wisdom, peace, strength, and guidance. When you're facing challenges, don't focus on your lack. Instead, turn to God, obey His word, and watch Him provide in miraculous ways. But be aware, God's provision doesn't mean you'll never face hardship. Instead, it assures you that in the midst of your struggles, God is there, providing what you need to endure and grow. Trust in Him, and witness the miracles of provision in your life. Chapter 22 Living in Financial Freedom Navigating the pathway to financial freedom involves learning to manage resources wisely, trusting God's guidance, and living generously. It's about stewardship, which is the responsible management of everything God entrusts to you. Remember, you're a vessel through which blessings flow, not a reservoir to store them. God's word in Luke 16 verse 10 confirms this, whoever can be trusted with very little can also be trusted with much. In your journey towards financial freedom, consider the concept of tithing, which is giving a tenth of your income back to God. This act of faith can create a mindset of abundance rather than scarcity, and opens up room for more blessings. Moreover, living in financial freedom also means being debt-free. To attain financial freedom, you must strive to live within your means, avoiding debt whenever possible. Lastly, remember that living generously doesn't only refer to monetary giving. It includes sharing your time, talents, and resources to bless others. As you align your financial habits with God's principles, you'll find that true financial freedom isn't about wealth, but about peace of mind and a generous heart. Chapter 23 God's Favor in Prosperity In your journey towards prosperity, it's essential to understand the significance of God's favor in blessing your efforts and multiplying your resources. God's favor is a powerful force that can lead to unanticipated breakthroughs in your financial life. It's not just about material wealth, but a state of abundance that permeates every aspect of your life, including health, relationships, and overall well-being. 
God's favor isn't earned by merit, but it's freely given out of His love for us. However, it's your responsibility to position yourself to receive it. This means living a life of obedience, service, and faith. It's also about having a positive and grateful mindset. Remember, God blesses those who are faithful and thankful. Biblically, God's favor is often linked with prosperity. Proverbs 8 verse 35, NIV, says, For those who find me find life and receive favor from the Lord. This means that seeking God and His wisdom is a sure path to prosperity. It's not about pursuing wealth for its own sake, but about aligning your desires with God's plan for you. Chapter 24 Testimonies of God's Provision Drawing on the power of personal experiences, let's explore some testimonies that illuminate God's phenomenal provision in times of need. These accounts aren't just stories, they're evidence of God's promises fulfilled, showing His active participation in our lives. Consider the account of a woman grappling with job loss. She was burdened with bills, yet she held on to Philippians 4 verse 19, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of His glory in Christ Jesus. She prayed, trusted, and waited. In a few weeks, she was offered a job better than the one she lost. She testified that God didn't just provide, He exceeded her expectations. Then there's the story of a man facing a health crisis. He couldn't afford the treatment. He clung to Psalm 107 verse 20, he sent out his word and healed them, he rescued them from the grave. He sought prayers and believed. Miraculously, an anonymous donor paid for his treatment. His testimony. God's provision isn't limited to financial needs, it encompasses all aspects of life, including health. Lastly, reflect on the tale of a family struggling with food scarcity. They turned to Matthew 6 verses 31 to 33, so don't worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink? But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. They prayed fervently, and a neighbor began to share their surplus. Their testimony affirmed that God provides, even in the simplest ways. These testimonies are a powerful reminder that God's provision is real, personal, and beyond what we can imagine. His promises are reliable, and He's faithful to fulfill them. Chapter 25 Walking in Financial Victory Embracing a life of financial victory isn't about amassing wealth, but about understanding God's principles for prosperity and applying them in your life. It's about recognizing that all you have is a gift from God, and it's your responsibility to manage it wisely. Your financial victory is rooted in a deep relationship with God, acknowledging Him as the source of all your blessings. Walking in financial victory means putting God first in your finances. Proverbs 3 verses 9 to 10 advises, Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the firstfruits of all your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. This isn't just about tithing or giving to the church, but also about prioritizing God in your spending and saving decisions. Furthermore, living a life of financial victory involves practicing good stewardship. This means being responsible with the resources God has entrusted to you. It's about avoiding debt, living within your means, and planning for the future. It's not just about making money, but about making wise decisions with what God has given you. In the end, your prosperity isn't of this world, but of God's kingdom. Just as the biblical figure Job found renewed wealth after his faith was tested, so too will you find prosperity in your faithfulness. Remember, it's through his divine favor and principles that you'll walk in financial victory. Your prosperity is rooted in the promises of God, a testament of his unending provision. So, keep faith, give freely, and live in his financial freedom. Thanks for listening.